Hello and welcome back to our channel, Our Retirement Antics. I made it home safely after my three week plus trip across the country and back. And I got several questions about the gear that we have on our motorcycle. So I thought I would do a video and uh, show some of the things that we've done to make our motorcycle we think safer and certainly more comfortable. So one of the first things that we did is get something called Baker Wings. Now there are a couple, at least a couple of manufacturers that make these. But my wife says that these make a big difference for her as far as buffeting when they're closed. And then on a warm day, you can open these up and it directs a lot of air back toward us. And the nice thing is if you have a motorcycle jacket, this will direct air right up the sleeves of the jacket and make the jacket kind of puff up. And it's much cooler in hot weather. The next thing that I did is uh, I had this on a previous motorcycle, the last one that we bought. This came with the bike and I just transferred it over. It's called a cramp buster. And the nice thing about it is you can slide it around to whatever position you want so that uh, at whatever throttle position you have, you can adjust it. So you can then just lay your hand on that and not really have to grip the, the grips as hard. So that helps a lot with cramping with the hands. The next thing that I have is something called, I think these are called grip puppies. I have large clubby hands and I found that the OEM grips were too small. And I think it cuts down on vibration. And really the key for vibration in the handlebars is to make sure that you still have these weights at the end of the, the handlebars. If you bought your bike used and it does not have these, that's the biggest thing that will cut down on vibrations if you have trouble with tingling in your hands or arms after some period of time. And I think most people have these, just a little bubble mirror, so you have a, a, a better view of what's going on beside you and behind you. And I talked about this in a previous video. This is the Ram Mount Quick Grip, and I think it's great for a phone. Slides in very easily, easy to take back out. Has these fingers that you can adjust for the width of your phone. Uh, it's worked very well for me. And it just uses the standard ram mount balls and connectors as uh, any other ram, ram mount product. And I had one guy ask me how this mounted to the handlebar, so I'll take this off. And with ram mount, they have several options, but the one that I like is a bracket that replaces the back part of your, well it doesn't replace, it just adds on to the, the C clamp or the C bracket that holds your brake lever and the clutch lever. I've got one on each side. And you get two balls that you can use then to mount RAM products to. And I really like that. And I thought before for my Garmin GPS, I really like my Garmin. And this is a large X grip that I use for, for the Garmin. And it uses the same RAM mount products. This is how I mount my GoPro. Again, it's just a you know, the, the extension, ram mount balls, and this is just a flat bracket that you can get, and then I've used the adhesive sticky GoPro mount on the top, and I really like how that works. I also mentioned that I've got USB power supplies on both sides to power all my toys, and I've got the standard 12-volt cigarette lighter adapter there if I need that. This is the 12-volt power supply for my heated gear, and I'll show you that in a moment. But one of the best things that you can do if you're having trouble with comfort, especially the seat, is to get an aftermarket seat. And they're not cheap, but they're well worth it. This is a Hartco. This is our second Hartco that we've had, uh, just because we like it. We got the seat, the backrest, and, uh, well, this backrest, or whatever you call this, is, this is for the passenger. My wife really likes this because the passenger tends to slouch down and forward because the Honda back seat slopes down and out at the bottom. So Hartco made this more vertical and actually even stopped at a point down here so you can uh, almost like slide your butt back a little bit. I don't know. Uh, Lori just really likes having that gap there because she can sit straight up vertically. And the other thing the Hartco seat does is moves you back or he can adjust the seat to move you back a couple of inches. I don't remember if it he raised me up or down, I don't remember, but certainly it moves back. And this seat, the OEM seat, is more 
scalloped, cut out in this area here and here for your legs. So when you come to a stop, you can reach the ground easier. But if you're tall or long legged, you really don't need that. And their seat has, it's wider in this area. It's certainly wider here. And also the OEM seat, I had a feeling that I was sliding forward all the time. And with this seat, you don't get that. Another thing I did was to purchase aftermarket, whatever these are called, uh, to replace the, the pegs. And these actually lower my feet, maybe a couple of inches, and I think move me forward slightly. And I also found that I really like having them tilted forward a little bit. It just made my ankles feel better. So that w works really good for me. And for highway pegs, these are Mick pegs, Mickey pegs. I think they're Mick O pegs. Uh, they were on a previous bike that we bought, and I just kept them when we traded that bike in. I really like them because they're up out of the way until you need them. Uh, they're very strong, sturdy, and where I have them positioned when I'm using them, my legs are really comfortable. They're, they're stretched out and not bent, and I, I use these a lot when I'm riding a long day. We replaced the OEM windshield with an F4 Customs windshield. It's the largest one that they make. And I really like it because the Airstream goes just over top of my head. It doesn't hit my helmet and bounce my head around. Some people like that. I really don't like it at all. So I'm happy with this and it's been very scratch resistant. I've, uh, I'd get another one tomorrow if I broke this one. Another thing that I found on Amazon, of course, is a USB interface so that I could play music from my phone into the auxiliary input of the sound system and then hear the music over the speakers. And it consists of a USB receiver and a noise filter. And I'll put a link to those guys uh, in the description. And all I did here was, again, I've got an, another USB power supply here that I just plugged the thing into. And... Uh, it's as simple as that. Once you set it up, when you start the bike, it automatically connects via Bluetooth to your phone and you're good to go. To me, it's important to have an air pressure gauge because I run a car tire on the rear of my bike and I run a pressure in that car tire that's right on the edge of the TPMS getting upset about it. So I often see a, a warning that I have low pressure but I run, I don't know, about 35 pounds in this car tire. And so from time to time, every few days, I'll check my air pressures and make sure that things are good. So I think that's an important thing to have. I almost got stranded last year because of running out of fuel. And you can watch the 2021 video to hear about that. But I found this gas can that I really like. I got it at a local auto parts store. There's a spout, but it's internal to the can until you need it. It seals up really well, and it fits very nicely in the side. And the other main thing I have here is paper towels and window cleaner. I try to clean the windshield at least every night. On my previous bike, I had an alternator to go out at around, I don't know, 75, 80,000 miles. And I replaced it with an aftermarket, and that one lasted a year and it was still under warranty so i replaced it again under warranty and that one lasted maybe a couple of weeks and severely overcharged the system at one time i was reading like 18 19 volts it blew out three headlights it could have done some real damage i got lucky but anyway when the oem alternator went out i decided that i needed a way to monitor the health of the alternator so I installed this little voltage gauge and I've really been happy with this guy. This particular color is easy to read in sunlight. It's been very accurate. And anytime I wonder what's going on with the alternator, I can just look down here and I know what the normal voltage should be just going down the road. So if it ever varies from that, I know that I'm gonna have a problem. Another thing that I do frequently is to change the oil in the differential. It costs like four bucks and change for the the Honda oil to go in the thing and I just consider it cheap insurance. The problem is it's a pain to put the oil back in the differential. It's easy to drain but then the fill plug is hard to get to and I've always made a mess every time I've tried to fill it up. 
So I guess I got this new toy. I don't know how it's going to work, but it's like a giant syringe. And it's got a couple of different tube sizes here you can connect to the thing. So the next time I change the differential oil or fluid, I think it's going to be a lot easier. Um, I don't know. might not work, but I think it's going to work well. So I'm very big on being visible and making other people see me. We have aftermarket fog lights. I forgot where we got them from. Electrical connection, probably and also the aftermarket turn signals that replace the the light in the in the mirrors and then i did not upgrade the headlights i actually kind of like that they're a different color because i think that makes people look and go what in the world is going on there and ignore all the bugs i haven't washed my bike yet since i returned and one neat feature is when i uh, use the turn signals both the fog light and the turn light uh, both flash at the same time I kind of like that. Papa, we can move it right down. What? Yay! <gasps> <laughs> Would you like a ride? Papa. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Papa. I think he's going to get a ride now. Where does Papa sit? I sit right there. I'm filming this part with my phone so the audio may sound a little different. This is the GoPro Hero 10 that I use for the video on this trip. And if you saw my video last year, I had a GoPro Hero 9. It would lock up eight or 10 times a day and I finally just gave up on it and I sent it back within the 30 day time period to get a complete refund. And I bought a DJI Action Cam, solid, dependable, never gave me a bit of trouble. And they came out with version two this year and I just did not like it. They went a completely different direction with the product. So the GoPro Hero 10, they've updated the processor and I thought I'd give it a try. And so far I like it. It may have locked up maybe four times the entire trip. So, uh, so far I'm happy with it. This is a polarizing filter that just slips over top of the existing lens. And I like that because it gets a, rid of a lot of reflections and it also makes colors more vivid, makes the skies bluer, and just makes colors uh, a little sharper, uh, pop out a little bit more. And if you do much video with the GoPro, you're gonna want a microphone, an external microphone. If there's very much wind, you really can't hear the audio. And uh, especially on the motorcycle, I found that I like to narrate some of the video while riding down the road. And the only way to do that is to have an external microphone. You have to buy GoPro's adapter, uh, USB-C. Uh, no other adapter will work. That You have to buy theirs. It's about 50 bucks. And it gives you a input for a microphone and then another charging port. And I did some research and found uh, something called Purple Panda. I don't have the dead cat on it, but the foam worked pretty well. And I actually use a binder clip that you would use to bind a bunch of papers together in, in an office and attach the little alligator clip to that because the alligator clip was a little weak. And then I would clip that on the boom of the my helmet microphone. And I found that that worked out really good. So most of the time I used this guy because I could just clip it on my helmet, on my microphone boom, and talk going down the road. And I had really good results with it. Another toy that I bought is a wireless mic. And it's made by Hollyland. And it's a pretty neat piece of gear. You get a receiver and two transmitters. And when you take them out of this box, they automatically turn on and sync to one another. And the box is actually a charging box. You can put these uh, there's receiver and transmitters in the box and it will charge them with the built-in battery. So I think the transmitters have about a four hour battery life and maybe six hours for the receiver. But with this box, you can just put them back in the box and recharge them and really go all day long. I found that I did not use this very often. It's a little bit of a pain to hook everything up and then you're worried about battery life during the day. Uh, I just found that most of the time I use the wired mic and I only use this if I wanted to step away from the GoPro camera and, and say something from a few feet away. And this actually has several hundred feet of range. 
Didn't use it much, but it was handy to have around a couple of times. And most of this video today, uh, I used the, the wireless mic because I was walking around and waving my hands and I didn't want the wire to get in the way. But highly recommend the Purple Panda lap uh, lapel mic. If you ever do any riding at all in cold weather or even cool weather, anything below <laughs> 65, I highly, highly recommend heated gear. This is my heated jacket. It's made by Hot Wired. I got it from someplace locally, um, Cycle Gear, I think. You just plug it in. It's got a built-in thermostat. I think there's three levels of heat. It also in the sleeves has this zipper, and behind there is a, another wire that pops out, and you can connect to heated gloves. Here are my heavy-duty heated gloves. I don't wear these often because they're kind of bulky, but when I need them, they're great. Here's a connector for the wire that comes out of the sleeve of my heated jacket. And these gloves have individual thermostats with the same three positions of heat that the jacket has. When the weather gets down in the 50s or so, and I need something on my hands, I really like these guys. These are just regular work gloves, Thinsulate, uh, leather palm. They're easy on, easy off, a little bit big. And when the weather gets down in the 30s, maybe, and my fingers are getting cold, I have these heated inserts. Now, these don't have thermostats. Uh, here's where they connect to the, again, the wire coming out of the sleeves of my jacket. But when I put these on and then put the yellow glove over top, uh, my hands are not cold anymore. They don't get really hot, but it takes care of the problem I have from the high 40s down to maybe the low 30s before I have to go to the big boys. Now, I don't have trouble with vibration with my current gold wing. The previous gold wing, we'd put aftermarket uh, grips on the thing, and we had to take the weights out of the end of the handlebars. And I would get tingling in my hands after three or four hours. So these are gel padded or gel palmed half finger gloves. And I wore these a lot. I don't wear them as much now because I don't have the vibration problems. But if you have tingling in your hands, after a long ride, I would highly recommend these. This is something I just simply call my neck condom. I don't even know where I got it. Lori got it for me somewhere. But uh, this is good to wrap around my neck. There's always that space between the bottom of the helmet and the top of your jacket that on a very, very cold morning, air just seems to find that spot. So this works really good around my neck. These things I got from Lowe's. I don't know what they're called, canopy bungees or something. And again, on a cold morning, air will come up my pant leg. So I simply wrap these around my pant leg, uh, you know, pull the leg down, make sure it's down over the boot, and just wrap these around the pant leg, and they stop the air from coming up my pants. Two other things I have here. This is a, simply a tire plugging kit, and I have had to use that, and a little air compressor that will plug into either just clip on the battery or what I've done is I've wired it so that I can plug it into my heated gear connector because I know that's fused at 10 or 15 amps and I won't blow the, the fuse uh, by running the air compressor. For boots, I like a brand called Original SWAT. And I think that's the name of the website. Yes, OriginalSWAT.com. I like them because of the side zipper. My feet are, have such a high arch that I can't wear slip-on boots and even this type of boot, a lace-up boot, I have to really unlace it to get my foot into the boot. But having the zippered side makes it easier to get my feet in and out of these boots. And these are the waterproof version. They come in a waterproof and a non-waterproof. Uh, I never had to ride in the rain on this current trip, so I can't really say how well they do, but uh, they should be fine. And I resisted for a long time getting a motorcycle jacket, but my wife finally guilted me into it. This one's dirty, it needs to be washed. But now I kind of feel naked without it. Uh, for a while I use it without the protective inserts and then I added the elbow inserts back and then shoulder in the back. And now it just feels natural. I like this one because it's got an inner liner that can be unzipped. So on a warmer day, I can unzip the liner. And like I said, I can zip it up. And then the arms have a zipper that I can unzip a little, turn the baker wings to direct air up my arm, and the whole coat will then balloon up to where it's really not 
touching my body for the most part. And there's all types of vents that you can open up to let air come up the arms and then out these vents to, to get a good airflow around you. It's time for another one because this one is faded pretty bad. It's got a lot of miles on it. And it's obvious when you look underneath compared to the shoulder that uh, it's faded. So there's a new jacket in my future this year. Just some miscellaneous things. Join the rewards programs for the different motels. Pick four or five of the major chains that you like to stay in and sign up for the rewards program. Even let them store your credit card number. Who cares if it gets lost? You're only liable for 50 bucks if your credit card number gets stolen. That makes it easy to get on the internet and reserve a room or pay for it ahead of time. And I found that AARP actually provides a very good discount even better than the normal rewards discount that you get through them. But the other benefit of using the rewards program is you build up points and I actually got a free room on this trip because I'd build up so many points by staying with the same chain over and over. So I highly recommend that. The other thing I really like is Google Maps. I have an iPad and I use Google Maps to look for motels in a city that I think I might want to stay in. I look to see if it looks okay uh, if it's in a bad part of town, uh, does it have a courtyard where I feel safe parking the bike or is it right beside a major highway and you're parking basically on the street? I, I don't like that. But Google Maps makes it very easy to find motels. I have an Apple Watch and you can set up a credit card with your Apple Watch so that you can actually pay using Apple Pay at many food stores, many gas stations now. I'm always terrified that I'm going to lose my wallet or drop a credit card out of my wallet when I'm fumbling uh, to pay for gas. So having the, the Apple Pay set up on my watch makes it very convenient. I just double click the thing, wave it in front of the, the sensor on the gas pump. It clicks and ding-dongs and then I'm ready to go. I really like that. I put a weather app on my iPad so it shows a little, I don't know what they call it, applet widget on the home screen and it's set up to give me the weather for wherever the iPad is at that moment. So every morning I would check the weather app before I rolled out of bed. And one morning it was 22 degrees. So that morning I just rolled back over in bed and slept for another hour. But I found that I really enjoyed that app. And the last thing, if you are retired and not yet on Medicare, you've got to be concerned about insurance. And we're using uh, Obamacare, but the problem with those policies is they're only good usually in the home county or in the same region where you live. You go out of state and all they cover is emergency care. And nowhere is that defined what emergency care is. Now, if you're in the ER and something's critical, they're supposed to cover it. But what if you had a severe accident and you're out of the ER, but you need to recover in a hospital room for three or four days? I don't think that's going to be covered. So we use something called tripinsurancestore.com. It's highly recommended. I just quite a bit of research on it. And they're primarily geared toward trip insurance, like a typical cruise or a vacation where you want to insure uh, not being able to take the trip. But the benefit that we like is they have very good medical insurance. So I got permission. I called them up and got the okay. I just insure the least amount a trip that I can, 500 bucks, but I get full medical regardless of how much you insure the trip for. And I think on this trip I had half a million dollars of medical insurance for maybe 50 bucks or something for the three weeks. So be careful if you're not on an insurance plan when you're traveling out of state. I've always worn an open face helmet, or I guess they're called maybe three quarter helmet. Really like it, never thought I'd have a full face helmet, but the more I thought about it, I know that full face helmet is much safer if I'm in an accident. So I finally decided to give one a try and I'm actually pretty happy with this one. It's an HJC, uh, I forget, I-90, I-90. And it's a modular, so of course the front, the front I can raise it up and down. Uh, one thing I thought was a gimmick, but I actually came to enjoy is the uh, sunshade, the visor that pops down internally. I don't know if you can see it there. I came to really enjoy that. 
it made it was very easy to put my communications gear inside there was very nice cutouts for the speakers inside even a little spot back down here a little cubby hole covered up to put some excess wiring and Lori and I have found that we really like the Cardo Freecom 2 plus Bluetooth communicators or whatever they're called uh, they had uh, the 2 plus has several hundred feet of range so we found that we really enjoyed if I'm filling up I would guess and she goes in to get a snack if we leave her helmets on she can describe what type of snacks are available from inside the store and I can tell her what to get for me I can play music through these guys and also they make it very easy to make and receive a phone call I know you're not supposed to make a phone call on the motorcycle but sometimes it's late a day and it's past due for me to check in with Lori let her know I'm okay and these guys just make it very easy to make a, a phone call. Like you, you just click a button a couple of times and it will call your primary contact. And it's easy to receive phone calls also. So I think the helmet is a keeper. I, I, I think I like it. And one last thing, I couldn't travel without my iPad. I use it to surf the web every night. I use it to look for motels, reserve motels. I use it for Google Maps. I use it to edit my videos. I use something called LumaFusion to edit my videos and I've been extremely happy with that. This is the iPad Pro, the, the larger version. Um, so either like Apple or you hate them, but this works really well for me. I have an iPhone and I take all my photos with the iPhone and the AirDrop makes it very easy to, to drop or transfer video or photos back and forth between the two devices. Hopefully this has been useful. I'll put links in the description for several of these products so you can go look at them or purchase them if you want to. And like I said, this is what works for me. It may not work for you, but uh, hopefully it helped. Thank you.